I am Gail Rubin, host and author of A Good Goodbye, Funeral Planning for Those Who Don't Plan to Die. Welcome to today's show, brought to you by the fine folks at French Funerals and Cremations. As the doyen of death, check out the pearls, I'm all about getting the funeral planning conversation started. A doyen is a woman who's considered senior in a group who knows a lot about a particular subject, and that would be me when it comes to the party no one wants to plan, a funeral or memorial service. By thinking about what you'd want in your funeral and having that conversation before there's a death or illness in the family, you can reduce stress at a time of grief, minimize family conflict, save money, and create a meaningful, memorable good goodbye. That's what this program is all about. Just as talking about sex won't make you pregnant, talking about funerals won't make you dead, and your family will benefit from the conversation. So let's get that conversation started. Our guest today to d discuss green burial and eco-friendly funerals is Darren Crouch, president of Passages International. Welcome, Darren. Hello, thank you. So tell us a little bit about Passages International. What is it? How did you get involved with this business? Um, Passages International is a company that uh, a partner and I founded about 14 years ago. Uh, my wife's family is actually in the funeral business and owns funeral homes. And um, her brother had conceptualized an idea to introduce an eco-friendly and biodegradable option to, to funeral homes and families. And um, over the years, we've developed the company, we've developed the product line. Uh, and as you'll see during this program, we have several different products made of different materials that will meet the needs of uh, uh, families in the funeral industry. Mm -hmm. So what is an eco-friendly funeral? Well, I think it really depends on who you ask. <laughs> um, most people will agree that an eco-friendly funeral will not involve embalming. Uh, it will not involve um, concrete or plastic vaults. It will not involve uh, traditional metal caskets. Um, and generally, we're trying to reduce the footprint or the carbon footprint left by our death. Um, and so there are many versions of an of a eco-friendly or a green funeral, but generally they incorporate one or more of those elements. Mm -hmm. There are many shades of green, even uh, among green burial grounds. Uh, we have information from the Green Burial Council, greenburialcouncil.org, that does actually list green burial grounds, hybrid burial grounds. Can you talk a little bit about those differences between sure um, you, you know I, I don't know the exact definitions of, of all of them but I do know there are different versions of, of cemeteries so for example there might be you know the darkest shade of green which would be uh, a conservation burial ground for example where the intention is that uh, the body is buried without embalming or caskets or vaults or anything like that and the idea is that the that property will go back to nature and become and it's part natural of natural landscape. Yeah, and there's no whatever. maintenance to it at all. Whatever right. grows, grows. Mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of goes all the way to incorporating green into what we might consider a traditional cemetery that are commonly called hybrid cemeteries where, you know, you might have a traditional green, you might have a traditional uh, part of the cemetery that's maybe been there for 100 years, but they're also incorporating a portion of that land and they're dedicating to that, that to mm -hmm. greener funerals where they may allow families not to bury with the vault or they may invert the vault. Mm -hmm. um, they may encourage natural caskets or no caskets at all, mm -hmm. no embalming, that type of thing. And really, that's really up to you know, the cemetery owner or the cemetery association to determine what they can, based on what they have available, incorporate into that. Mm -hmm. or also, the idea of whether the cemetery uses pesticides or not on on treating the grounds, exactly. I believe, is another level. I mean, you can go a long way with this, yeah. going all the way down to, you know, walking mowers versus riding mowers, oh hand-dug graves versus yeah. backhoes. I mean, it, it, it goes a long way. <laughs> it just depends how far you want to take it, really. Yeah, yeah. So do you see a growing demand for green burials? Or we, we will talk about cremation as a, a separate part of going green, but... Um, for, sure. for this kind of going greenness? We see a large uh, increase in demand. I mean, our company continues to grow every year, and that's a good barometer 
of, um, of growth in the industry. We're one of the largest suppliers uh, to funeral homes around the country. That's right. You are a wholesaler, so nobody buys directly from you. They Correct. buy through a funeral home. Correct. So yeah. a family would have to ask their funeral director to get our product for them. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I mean, it, it's growing even through the, the, this economic climate. Our sales continue to grow, which is telling me demand is increasing. Um, and more and more we hear from funeral directors that have families come in and say, I want a green funeral. That's great. Now, I understand you offer carbon neutral shipping. What does that mean? It's actually a program that we work with our shipping company UPS on. Mm -hmm. And they have, a, they have a service where we can actually pay extra per shipment that they send for us. And they take that, that revenue and they uh, donate it or invest it in carbon neutral or carbon offset programs all over the country and all over the world. And if you can imagine a company like UPS or FedEx or any of these big companies, I mean, they're shipping millions of packages every day, and uh, that can leave a significant carbon footprint. So we, mm -hmm. we want to do our part to try to reduce that footprint. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit about cremation, speaking of carbon footprints. The Cremation Association of North America estimates that an average cremation generates 532 pounds of CO2 per average size person. Uh, yet, um, once you've cremated the body, uh, there are different ways of keeping or disposing of the ashes. Do you have any uh, insights into regarding what people want to do with ashes once they've had a loved one cremated? Well, I think it really varies. I think more and more, because we're a mobile society, people are not living in the same house or the same city they lived in you know, 30 years ago. And so scattering has become more and more popular. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of products that we have are either designed to scatter from or to be placed in the earth or the water. Um, once they're placed in the earth or the water, they're designed to break down uh, naturally over time. And it really depends on the materials. And I think we'll talk a little bit more about that later yes. uh, as to how each of them works. Yes, yes. Um, well, in fact, why don't we actually look at what we have in front of us is a uh, wicker basket casket. Mm -hmm. Now, this, uh, I love this because my husband does the laundry in our family, <laughs> and he's going to be buried in a wicker basket casket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's on the inside? We, we, we're not going to lift the lid, but... Um. It's a very simple lining. It's a, it's a natural cotton interior. It's fully lined. Um, you know, these ki kinds of caskets are not made... Uh, to be similar to traditional caskets. You know, traditional caskets have a lot of padding. They're very plush. They're somewhat opulent. Uh, people that see value in these types of caskets are looking for simplicity. Uh, they're looking for a lighter carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we, we strive for with this type of product. This product can be cremated or buried. There's no plastic in it. There's no metal no in metal. it. Yeah. There's no additives in it. It's a purely natural product. And the beauty of Willow, for example, is it's a sustainable material because it's very fast growing mm -hmm. and it's very renewable. And you have other types of woven caskets? We do. We have, uh, we have a, a similar casket also made out of willow, but we also have a bamboo as well, uh, which is a woven a bamboo. Was there yeah, the, we have a seagrass casket, but the seagrass is really decorative and ornamental. The structure of oh, it okay. is primarily willow still. Okay. And then, um, oh, I didn't think about that you could actually cremate a body in that. And of course, when you do have somebody cremated, you need to provide some kind of container to put the body in exactly. to go into the retort. So um, that exactly. is a, a, a really nice option to know about. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about this one urn here. What's, okay. what's special about this urn? That's actually made out of cornstarch. Um, and so that urn is designed to biodegrade in the ground. But the beauty of cornstarch is, as you know, if you go to Whole Foods and get a knife and fork at Whole Foods, is they don't biodegrade quickly, they biodegrade over time. So we have families that will purchase that urn and they'll use it to store the cremated remains. And it can be stored indefinitely because it will not biodegrade until it's placed in the earth. That's good to know. We're going to take a short break. And when we return, we'll continue our conversation with Darren Crouch of Passages International and dig a bit deeper into the topic of green burial and eco-friendly funerals. Hi, I'm Gail Rubin, host and author of A Good Goodbye, Funeral Planning for Those Who Don't Plan to Die and creator of The Newly Dead Game. 
The newly dead game is like the classic TV show, The Newly Wed Game, but the questions test how well you know someone else's last wishes. It's a fun way to get the funeral planning conversation started. For more information about The Newly Dead Game, visit agoodgoodbye.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Darren Crouch, president of Passages International. So let's continue this conversation about green and eco-friendly funerals. So Darren, how do families find out about green burial, eco-friendly funerals? I mean, is, is there a source? Well, I think that's one of the, the challenges that we've had as a company is educating consumers that they can green their funeral. Um, you know, people know that when they want to get organic produce at the grocery store, they can, go to the, they can go buy that. If they want to buy a hybrid vehicle, they can go to Ford or Toyota and buy a vehicle like that. What they don't know when a loved one suddenly passes away is that they can take steps to green, green up that process. Um, and whether that's, you know, using a biodegradable urn after cremation or using a wicker casket for burial, they can do those things. Uh, and because we've identified that people don't ordinarily know that they can do that, we actually launched a website called thegreenerfuneral.org. And it's a, it's a website designed to educate consumers about the steps they can take to, to green the funeral process. That's great. Um, you talk about burial, cremation, uh, water disposition. Yeah, we try to touch on everything that a family could do. We want to give mm -hmm. them as many options as we can because mm -hmm. what we've found is that most families, every family's idea of green is different. So what's mm -hmm. green for you may not be green enough for me or too green for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what we as a company try to do is provide alternatives for families so that if they want to be a light shade of green, we have options for them. If they want to be a very dark shade of green, we have options for them. And we're trying to educate funeral directors to be offering the same type of uh, alternatives to families as well so that when families come in, you know, when they say green funerals, the funeral director shouldn't just assume what that means. They need to ask, well, what does that mean to you? Because what it means to me and what it means to you could be very different. Exactly, exactly. Well, let's look at a few of the cremation urn products that you offer that are green. I love this one. It's a um, Himalayan rock salt. Urn. Correct. And... Um, it's such a beautiful urn. I would keep this around. I actually have a lamp that has a light bulb inside of it, so it has a nice amber yeah. glow. But this is actually meant for disposition in the ocean, correct? Correct, yes. It's, uh, I mean, we mine it in solid blocks of salt, uh, and we turn it on a lathe, and there are no additives in that whatsoever. Um, when we put that in the water, it dissolves in about four hours. Wow. So, uh, you know, California actually is passing some new legislation that is requiring this type of urn for families that want to place cremated remains at sea. Well, and speaking of uh, doing that, the EPA has a rule about being three nautical miles offshore to avoid pollution. Correct. But there are no cremation police in the United States who are going to, you know, come up and say you can't scatter here. Exactly. Um, I think part of it has become a bit of a liability where they don't want urns washing up on the beach or a fisherman pulling one out mm -hmm. and having cremated remains in there. And so the urns that we supply are all designed to float briefly so that families can say a, a, a goodbye, put flower petals, sing a song, mm -hmm. read a poem, and then they sink and they biodegrade. Well, and, and in fact, here on the casket, we have some uh, examples. This one is the shell, Correct. right? And, of course, you can see it looks like a shell, yeah. but it's got this line of holes here on the top and a bunch on the bottom. This is the bottom. Correct. Yeah. So what you would do is it opens up and you would put the cremated remains inside. Correct. There's a, there's a place where you put the cremated remains inside. You glue it back together. And then when you place it on the, in the water, uh, water comes in from the bottom, air goes out the top, and it, and it sinks. Uh, this product is a really interesting product because it's actually made from recycled paper. We actually get the paper from a company that makes paper plates and paper cups. So it's a non-toxic food grade paper that biodegrades completely in the water. That's wonderful. And you have this other model which I understand won an award. Yes, that was actually designed by a Swedish company that's done work for the likes of Volvo and Ikea. Uh, and they designed the product and the concept with this product is that 
we provide a pack of, uh, of note cards mm -hmm. that the family would get. They could write personal notes on it and then place it into the urn prior to being placed at sea. And this urn's called the Memento mm -hmm. because of it. But yeah, this is a very yeah. prestigious Red Dot Award. Uh, it's given out every year in Europe. Yeah, and it's got so. yeah, the holes there in the bottom to let the water in. Exactly. Yeah. So. And then um, you have scattering urns. Uh, yes. Um, we have products designed to be scattered from. Everything we've talked about so far is designed to be placed in its entirety in the water. Something like this is designed to be scattered from. And the way it works is the family would simply remove the lid. And uh, on the top of it, I'm not sure if you can see that, there's a, a perforated die cut. Mm -hmm. The family would push their finger through that, mm -hmm. and then they would scatter the cremated remains. Um, we actually have a new feature with this particular product where we can actually put... Um, a photograph of the deceased on the top with the dates and the name of the deceased as well. So it's completely personalized. And, and then you can recycle the carton. Yes, it's made from recycled content and then mm -hmm. it can be either kept mm -hmm. or recycled after it's used. Mm -hmm. And you have smaller versions so you can split up Yes, we have family. mini sizes so that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, instead of grandma scattering grandpa's remains, it might be the children and the grandchildren all have a portion and all scatter a portion mm -hmm. of the remains. Mm -hmm. And then another biodegradable urn is over my shoulder here with the um, Footprints sand and on it. gelatin. Yes, that's yeah. similar to an unfired clay. Um, and we have several different designs, but that one is particularly prop, uh, popular because it actually has sand on the outside of it and footprints in the sand. Mm. Um, it's a very evocative image on the urn, and it's a very, very popular urn for us. And again, uh, that dessolves in less than a day in the water. Okay. And, um, and then you have these other little, what are these? <laughs> we call those blooming bookmarks and blooming mini cards. And uh, the idea behind those is that the, the ornament that is glued to that card actually has wildflower seeds in it. Mm -hmm. And so those are given out by funeral directors across the country to families that are attending services and they have the name of the deceased on them um, and each individual can take it and either keep it or plant it and it'll bloom in memory of the deceased. Nice, nice. And so. do you have, um, you know, people are, love their animals, their pets. Yes. Um, do you have we do have Options a line of pet, pet products. Yeah. yeah, we have uh, we have caskets made out of wicker for pets. We have yeah. uh, smaller versions of many of these urns that you see uh, today that are designed for pets as well. In fact, the one with the footprints on, we have one with paws on it as well. No. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So what, if any, uh, misconceptions are there about green burial? Do you know of any? Um, issues that well, I think people people, people think you have to be green or not green, and I, I think what people don't realize is they can pick and choose where they want to be green or how green they want to be. And so, if they're educated about the options, you know, there's nothing to stop someone embalming a body and placing that body in this willow casket, and then putting this willow casket in a vault at the cemetery they paid five thousand dollars for ten years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we use the word greener and not green, because you can never be green enough. Yeah. If we transport this casket from point A to point B, we've burnt fossil fuels and it becomes less green. And so we use the word greener and we want to provide families with options to green up the process. And they can pick and choose what is meaningful to them in terms of greening that funeral process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is there a, um, um, an issue with obesity? that you address? I know in traditional funerals um, that people are making larger caskets uh, in metal and wood. Are, are there larger caskets um, in the we've, green world? We've looked at that. I, I think our market is more often health conscious, outdoorsy, those types of people. <laughs> those are going to be the so, obese people. <laughs> so they tend to be not on the obese side. Yeah. However, I, I think that is certainly going to be something we need to look at in the future. And you know, really, I think one of the misconceptions about this is you don't have to be a Whole Foods shopper driving a Prius mm -hmm. to green your funeral. Well, and I think the wicker basket caskets are a nice option for Jewish and Muslim burial. Absolutely, and we hear that a lot from funeral directors that contact us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would um, somebody who was going to um, 
get one of these, but maybe the body had to be shipped elsewhere for burial. Mm -hmm. I know that with a traditional casket, you have something called an air tray, which is a wooden um, platform underneath and Correct. cardboard around it. Mm -hmm. Would a casket like that with a body be shipped in a, a similar manner, do you think? I don't see any reason that it couldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know specifically the airline regulations. Each airline may have a different regulation. Uh, but there's no reason this product wouldn't fit in an air tray. Mm -hmm. um, our standard size casket is the same length and the same width at the shoulders as a traditional standard casket. So okay. in terms of the logistics of it, it would work. And with regards to the regulation, I can't speak to that 100%. Well, you know, body shipment does, with TSA regulations, does have to be done by a funeral home because those are known shippers Absolutely. is what they're known as. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing to think about that we didn't really get into the specifics of at the beginning was that how much resources are used in traditional funerals. You're talking about many, many board feet of hardwoods, concrete, enough concrete to build a two-lane highway from New York Absolutely. to Detroit, Seven going eight. into the ground every single year, yeah. and enough metal to build the Golden Gate Bridge going into the ground. Yeah, every enough enough year. formaldehyde to fill like eight Olympic sized swimming pools. I mean it's it's a lot and you know we can do better. We can uh, do our part to mm -hmm. uh, leave a smaller footprint in exactly. the world. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Were there any other um, uh, products that uh, we didn't get to talk about that you might want to mention? You know we have a line of products called our Earthen collection. And th that's an interesting product because it's actually also made of paper, but it's a different type of paper. It's actually a handmade paper. And the beauty of that product is we don't cut down trees to make the paper. So what we do is we harvest the limbs of the tree, harvest the bark of that tree, and we use that to produce the paper. And then it's made completely by hand. So not only is it biodegradable on the consumption end, but on the production end, it's completely renewable as well. Oh, so that's, great. that's a very and interesting product line. And actually, I guess people can uh, learn about all of those different products at your website, passagesinternational.com. Correct. They can learn about it there, yes. Um, and they can also learn about what it means to green up their funeral at a greenerfuneral.org. Correct. Correct. So, well, I really appreciate you coming in today and, and sharing this. I personally plan to be green with my final arrangements. Mm -hmm. uh, because Jewish burial is naturally green burial, and um, uh, I encourage people to talk about that and have a conversation with their families. I agree. So thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. And uh, so I appreciate having Darren Crouch, president of Passages International, and a big thank you to the French family of companies for supporting today's program. And... Just remember, there's more information about what we talked about today at my website, agoodgoodbye.com. And remember, talking about sex won't make you pregnant, and talking about funerals won't make you dead. Start a conversation today. Another holiday, graduation, promotion, anniversary, and of course, the birthdays. When you add all these events together, life can seem like one big celebration. At French Funerals and Cremations, that's exactly what we think life should be, a celebration. Since 1907, the French family has been committed to celebrating life. When it comes to celebrating a loved one's life, we welcome you into our home and we're here to help with the planning and details. It's been said that Americans bury enough concrete each year to pave a two-lane road between San Francisco and Phoenix. Passages is the leading global supplier of green and biodegradable funeral products. We think being environmentally conscious is not a choice. It's a responsibility. 
That's why we create eco-friendly and biodegradable cremation urns, caskets, and memorial offerings. Go to earthurn.com or call 888-480-6400 today. Thank you.